Multiplayer games are really fun, right? At least when some random Russian or Asian guy doesn't kill you a lot of times during the match. The great thing about multiplayer games is that even if you only have a couple of simple mechanics, your game becomes much more entertaining if it has multiplayer. Since quarantine is getting worse here in Chile, and it doesn't seem like it will stop anytime soon, I wanted to make my own 3D multiplayer game from scratch in 30 days. And I know what you might be thinking. Wow, this guy must have a lot of experience making games to make something like that. And that's not true at all. I don't even know how the internet works. That's why, before starting, I'm going to define what from scratch means. And from scratch means that I've been making some games for the past couple of months, but they all have been 2D single player games. So this will be my first time not only working with an online game, but also my first time working with 3D games. For the software, I'm going to use the Unity engine to make my game and Blender to make the 3D modeling and animations. So in the next 30 days or so, I'll need to learn not only how to use Blender, but also how the internet is supposed to work. The good part is that I took a computer networking class back in my second year of college. The bad part is that I dropped that class after 4 weeks, and I don't remember anything. But I hope that won't be a problem, I guess. Anyway, without further ado, this is my progress. First, I needed to know how multiplayer games work, and after searching a lot, and by a lot of course I don't mean the first link on YouTube, because I used the third one, I came across this tutorial series made by Tom Willand. He is a really cool guy, so if you want to understand the basics of how a simple multiplayer game works, this is definitely a good place to start. And after 12 hours of following his videos, I finished all the tutorials. Once I had finished all of that, I had a pretty simple looking kind of online game. So I used that as a base for my project. Okay, now I have a basis for my project, but I need to think what I would like to add to my game. And I wanted to add a grappling hook, kind of like Spider-Man games. I searched for a tutorial and I came across this one made by Danny. So I watched his tutorial, and after 5 hours of writing my own version of the code, here is my fully functioning 3D character controller with a grappling hook. At this point, I have a client and a server, and I also have a 3D character controller that I really like. So I just have to copy my code from one project to the other, and my game is done. Because programming works just like that, right? Sadly, that's not the case for me, because I didn't understand what I did in the client and server stuff, so after spending one day trying to actually understand what was going on with that, I finally was able to write a new code from scratch. Honestly, I had a hard time at first, but it wasn't as complicated as I thought it would be, so I still not regret dropping that class. Of course, I don't understand absolutely everything, but I think I get the idea. Basically, it works this way. You have two instances of the game. One is the server and the other one is the client. The client listens for the input of the player and sends it to the server. The server then processes the information and does something with it. This is where most of the calculations happens. Then, it sends back the information to the client and here the client replicates everything that happened on the server. So for example, if I want to move a character, this would happen. The client will wait for the player to press any key, in this case, the W key. Then it will tell the server that the W key has been pressed. The server is programmed to know that if the W key is pressed, it should move the player forward. Finally, it sends the player's position back to the client. Here everything is replicated. Okay, I understand how the client and server interact with each other. And I also understand how the character controller works. So I just have to implement the character controller into the game. And after doing that, I have a pretty decent working character controller 3D physics based electric boogaloo kind of game working. 
and it was time to test it with some friends. And of course, everything worked as it should. No bugs, no errors, no... nothing. Everything worked completely as planned, like I said at the start of the video. Even though this game was far from being finished, the fact that it was a multiplayer game made it really fun to play with my friends for a couple of minutes. Are you still with me? I know what you might be thinking. To this point, I've only been copying random code from the internet and put it into my game. But that's how programming works. First, you copy some text from the internet and you don't understand shit about what it's saying or what it means or how it works. But then, little by little, you're understanding it more and more and trying to make it your own version of the code. But yeah, my game lacks personality, so I needed to add some things to spice the game up a little bit. And that's when I decided to start learning 3D modeling. But first, I added some explosions and now you can use the projectiles to propel yourself through the air. And I also added a respawn, because if you don't have a respawn, then if you fall off the platform, you'll keep falling into the infinity and that's not good. No one would like to play a game like that. 3D modeling was pretty much a new world for me. But I didn't have time for that shit about tutorials or Blender introduction videos, no. I needed to get things done. That's why I started by watching a tutorial about how to make a character in Blender without knowing anything about Blender first. And of course that didn't work, so I spent a day trying to actually understand Blender. And then I watched another tutorial about character modeling and rigging, and three hours later, I finally have my character. Then I added a sword and a blaster, because swords and blasters are cool, and I needed to make it at least slightly different from the one of the tutorial. Animation time. Yeah, I didn't have any prior experience with animation either, and I refused to watch another tutorial, so I tried to find inspiration on some things, but apparently I don't even know what running is supposed to look like, so I watched another tutorial instead. Yeah, I know, this video has been pretty much me just following a bunch of random tutorials on YouTube. But now I have a decent looking running animation, and I also have a walk animation, a sliding animation, a sword attack animation, and a jumping animation. I also added a few more details to my character, and now he looks like a Templar. If a Templar Knight was something like a Power Ranger. But he looks cool. And yes, the Naruto run was on purpose. Just if you were wondering about that. Then I had to fight with Unity because it won't let me import my animations properly. But turns out the culprit was Blender all along. I knew I hate you, Blender. Remember the explanation about how the client and server worked? Well, to implement the animations, I had to do the exact same thing a lot of times. So for every animation, I first read the input of the client then send it to the server and then animate back the player in the client. I did this in order to make it easier to animate all of the other characters in the game, so if there's a better way of doing this, I definitely would like to know. One thing I didn't consider was that I needed a separate model for the first person camera. So I went back to Blender and made separate models for both hands, and now it looks like an angel. But don't worry about it, it won't show up in the gameplay like this. Once I had my player animations decently working, it was time to start thinking about the level design. I wanted this to become some kind of battle royale, that's why I needed a map with enough space. So I started designing some low poly terrain in Blender inspired by humans fall flat, and for some reason it didn't work when I tried to import it into Unity. So I switched to Pro Builder, which is a Unity built-in feature that allows you to build like a pro, I guess. Pro Builder. And I ended up with this fucking ugly looking building. Then for some reason I switched to Blender again to make my house models. Honestly, I don't remember why I did that either, and at this point I'm really confused. But I only know that I wanted a medieval setting. But my building skills weren't that 
isn't to make that, so I just follow another tutorial, yeah, and then my level was done. But of course I wanted to level up my graphics, so I added some lights, camera effects, bloom, things like that, and now I have a much better looking city. And for the finishing touch, I added that scream mechanic, so if you ever feel surrounded, you just scream and all the other players around you go flying back. And if you're wondering what the scream means, well, it's an ancient Chilean spell which I won't tell you what it means, so good luck with that. For the name of my game, one of my friends suggested the name Champions of Musgeria, but I changed it to Knights of Musgeria, and if you're wondering what Musgeria is, well, it's the place where the Musgerian people live. That's pretty obvious. One last thing. While I was making this game, I always had the exact same error that I decided to ignore for some reason, but a little before finishing this, I had an epiphany and I solved the bug, but I don't have any idea how. And with all that done, it was time to test it again. Everything seemed to work properly on the test, but for some reason, the final version had some bugs that didn't appear on the test version. But besides a couple of bugs, we had a lot of fun playing it. And it was my first ever multiplayer game, so I was really happy with the results. I'm planning to update it and solving the bugs in a while. But first, I need some rest. And there you have it, my process of learning to make a multiplayer game in one month from scratch. And of course, this could be done in a shorter span, but I had a lot of stuff to do and my computer stopped working for some reason in the second week, but at least I finished my goal. So if you liked this video, please let me know and subscribe to this channel. I would be uploading updates and things like that here. Thank you for watching.